On Sunday, November 5th of this year, I will be at DebateCon 4. I actually have two debates scheduled, one with Destiny, one with somebody called CSP Cypher. Links to get you tickets are in the description of this video. Come out, see me, meet me, have a great time. Look, I understand that cities run by Democrats are terrible in their administration. I understand that bad governance is part and parcel with that kind of political party having such a stronghold, especially when you don't have a situation where leadership shifts back and forth but we're covering another story on this channel of another home in Atlanta being completely demolished despite the fact that we have a wrong address situation that led to this happening I can't believe I'm doing it again special thank you to this particular Twitter account for sending me this new story because it is just as asinine as the other one but unless we talk about this unless we cover these stories unless we shine a light on what is going on in the city of Atlanta it is bound to happen again now we're going to get into this but before we do I want to thank everybody who signed up for my website actually actualjusticewarrior.com slash join. Oh, give me the money. Give you, give me the money. Okay. And thank you to the podcast listeners, Spotify, Apple, and Google's podcasting platform. Unforgivable accident. That's how one homeowner describes coming back from vacation to find a company accidentally demolished a home she owned. Company management claims they had the wrong address. Look, I understand mistakes are made. I understand there's errors on paperwork. I understand that sometimes, you know, you accidentally put your garbage in your recycling bin and your recyclables in your garbage bin and sanitation gives you a fine and maybe this is getting a little too personal but you know what when you make a mistake that leads to the demolition of somebody's house and this tends to happen so many times in Atlanta I'm starting to get suspicious I'm starting to think that this might be a stealth way of them trying to destroy homes that they don't like in order to rebuild the city in the image of the city council because this keeps happening in Atlanta. It is so absurd that I've covered this many stories, and this time it's a little old lady who is out one of her properties that's, by the way, been in her family for four decades. Yeah, Alex, that's really the million dollar question. Take a look. This is all that is left of this home. Thankfully, no one lived inside at the time, but it's a home that's been in the family for over four decades. Look, I've said it before, and I will say it again. I absolutely love me some local news. And the reason why is because no matter how serious a story, no matter how much it demands some hard-hitting journalism, you always get goofy things. And in this case, they have the slow zoom out as this guy is actually standing on the rubble with a very bright red sneakers to draw attention to the fact that that he's standing on the rubble of the house. They must have planned this. They must have thought this was the most brilliant shot ever. But to me, this seems like something incredibly goofy in a very serious situation. And again, if you don't recall what I'm talking about, about this happening consistently in the city of Atlanta, let me throw it to an older clip that I covered on this channel before so you can see this exact same deal happening. In the process of a remodel, they come with bulldozers and knock the entire house down. It's just gut-wrenching. I, I don't even like looking at it. This century-old home used to sit on this West End lot near the Beltline. Everett Tripodis and his mother bought it as an investment property. This is prime real estate. But the city of Atlanta's Code Enforcement Division demolished the home. Tripodis says he had listed the home with the city's vacant property registry as required by law. But he says the city sent its code enforcement notices and orders to the wrong addresses. You can see from the case file, certified letters to an incorrect address were marked return to sender. It blows my mind how they could have mistakenly sent these to the wrong address. Now, in that particular instance, they actually sent that guy the bill for the demolition. And when we did an update months later, they were still trying to get money from him and they had actually issued a lien against him, which prevented him from doing anything financially. It was just a savvy guy who was trying to start up a rental home business, trying to be productive in the economy. And they destroyed, in that case, a historic home. And by the way, even in that story, they referenced another story in the city of Atlanta where they did the very same thing so yeah this is a common problem in the city of Atlanta and it needs to be addressed and I think it might be an issue at this point of corruption rather than insane incompetence however I will not rule it out based on how that city tends to be run 
I'm just left with a big old mess. Susan Hodgson can't even begin to process how her longtime family property ended in a pile of rubble. It started while she was on vacation and received a call from a neighbor. Did you hire somebody to tear your house down next door to me that's been boarded up for about 15 years? And I said, uh, no. Now, look, fortunately, this wasn't a house that they were even really using, even for a rental property kind of capacity. It was boarded up for 15 years. So in my opinion, if they wanted to condemn this property and then tear it down, they should have went through an ordinary process. But it turns out they weren't even supposed to be here. They were supposed to be destroying another property. They just decided to show up. However, the bulldozing company was not polite to the neighbor at all. And they're going to describe this interaction for you in this local news segment. No, she said, well, there's somebody over here just demolished the whole house and tore the whole house down. Hodgson says the workers got nasty. He told her to shut up and mind her own business. I mean, honestly, what's happening? What What are we doing? What What's even going on right here? Somebody comes out to you and says, hey, I'm on the phone with the homeowner. She says she knows nothing of this demolition of this property. And he says, shut up, mind your own business. Now, why did I give them a Southern accent? I don't really know. I don't really care. I'm just having fun with this story because if I don't laugh at this and I just think about the fact that I've covered multiple cases, specifically in Atlanta, Georgia, of this happening at the wrong address, it's going to make me lose my mind. I'm going to start yelling into the camera and I don't want to do that because you know what? It's late in the evening in my apartment and maybe my new neighbors aren't used to me talking this loud this late. So she sent a family member over. I said, well, look, I want to see a permit or something. And he said, okay. Uh, he pulls it out and he says, oh, I'm at the wrong address. And just packs everything up and leaves and the house is deported. Now I have to admit, this part is genuinely funny. The fact that he takes out the permit to show to the relative, like sticks it in the face and then realizes, oh wait, uh, this is the wrong address. I got to skedaddle. I got to get out of here. I have another home to demolish. Hopefully I get this one right the next time. And if I don't, you know, third time's a charm. If I destroy two homes on my way to the proper one that I actually have a permit for, then that should be all right. And they just left the home like this. They just left the property like this. Now, I'm hoping that this ultimately ends up leading to a lawsuit. I'm hoping that this bulldozing company, or if it was ordered by the city or the permit being granted by the city in order to destroy this, those people are held accountable for these actions. But seriously, this is what this woman is left with, even though she had this property for, again, 40 years. Now, as stated earlier, I don't want to over-dramatize this. The home was, in fact, not really in use for about 15 years, according to her, but it's still her property, and that does not give you the right to just demolish it, especially when you don't have any authorization to demolish it, and why this keeps happening in Atlanta, I, I seriously, it's, it's making me lose my mind. Down, gone. The home sits on Lakewood Avenue in southwest Atlanta, and no one was living inside at the time. It's been boarded up for about 15 years, and we keep it boarded, covered, the grass cut, um, you know, the yards cleaned up. Uh, taxes paid. Hodgson says she hasn't heard anything from the company responsible. So let me get this straight. They tear this person's home down. They realize during the process of them tearing this person's home down that they don't actually have the authorization to be there. And then they just take off. They skedaddle. And then they don't respond to the homeowner. And this segment, by the way, was released by the news on Saturday, October 21st. So this is around a week after this actually happened. And there's just no response. Now, we got the company's name from the local news. You call it, we haul it. I love the rhyming. I do appreciate it. Hodgson says she hasn't heard anything from the company responsible. You call it, we haul it, and it's based in Atlanta. It's just hard to believe that somebody just thinks they can got the right just to come up and tear something up and just walk away from it and leave it. And no come back say i'm sorry I, you know I'll, what do y'all need to do to fix this now look i try to actually find this particular company based out of atlanta so you know we could probably push to demand some kind of justice some kind of compensation for this particular victim of their presumed incompetence however all i seem to find 
was a social media account, and I'm not going to name the platform, that seemed to be associated with a company of the same name that's based out of San Diego. Now, because this doesn't seem like it's connected, I will not be linking that in the description, but I will say to you guys out there in the audience, if you decide to contact this organization, it seems like there are a number of companies with the same name, and this is specifically an Atlanta-based one, and all I could really find for that was some dead links and whatnot to a crappy website for the Atlanta-based operation. So I'm going to have to say, don't go out of your way to contact people. I would love to provide something for you guys to sink your teeth in. But unless you know the local affiliate out in Atlanta or have some kind of way to demand justice for this woman, then there's really not much we can do. And now... Oh, it's just a, dump, a rumbled mess. The whole house is just deported in the crushed in. Hodgson and her family has to figure out what to do next. I think he owes us an apology and fix the problem. He needs to fix the problem. Now, if there was a GoFundMe or something for this woman, I would link it in the description of this video. I have not found anything as of right now. However, at the time that this video ultimately ends up going up, or maybe after the fact, if I get a reliable verified link... I will definitely insert it in the description box, so depending on when you're watching this, there might be some way for you to help this woman if you care to. But overall, I don't know what the hell is going on in the city of Atlanta. I don't know what their process is for approving permits, and I don't understand how time and time again you can end up in these wrong address kind of demolition situations where people are out a home. Thankfully, this one wasn't really in use. However, that still doesn't make it right. That still doesn't make it okay. And then they could just ghost them. They could never take accountability, and it seems like the legal recourse really works against them. Remember, in the previous story that we talked about, when this happened, they sent the guy the bill, which was tens of thousands of dollars, I believe it was around 67000 total, and then they put a lien on his property, even though he has pending litigation against the city over the inappropriate destruction of his property. So they don't seem to care. They don't seem to have a process for property rights. And considering Atlanta is in the state of Georgia, I understand it's a blue city, but it's in a state that is governed by Kemp, a Republican, you would think there would be some move to better protect private property. And it's honestly shameful. I expect more from Republican governors in this country. But because this is happening over and over again, and I've yet to see the announcement of even an investigation against the city of Atlanta, this particular building destruction permit system, or against these companies that seem to go willy-nilly and start destroying property, even though they don't double-check the address, is honestly just a black mark on our country as a whole. We can't have a serious nation if we can't respect the basics of private property rights, and this is yet another instance of this failure, and again, and it's in the city of Atlanta, yet again, somehow it keeps happening specifically there, and there still is not an adequate explanation. But hey, those are just my thoughts. Let me know your guys' thoughts down in the comments below. If you like this video, then show them by leaving a like. Subscribe for more content. Follow me on my social media. Support me via the support links in the description of this video. This has been me talking about the absolute madness going on in Atlanta. Till next time.